The next step we're going to do is prepare the uh, interface board, which is what you'll be connecting all of these buttons and switches to. This is the connection board on my test unit, and I'll show you this one here. Here's an up-close look of what the interface board looks like. On the left-hand side, you'll see that the limiters are listed there. Starting at the top left is the Floor 2 Backup, Floor 2, the Floor 1, and the Floor 1 Backup. Uh, there's an, a, a ribbon cable that gets connected here. And on the right hand side over here is where the LEDs for the buttons as well as the button connections are uh, connected to and the emergency stop switch will also be connected on this side. So to prepare the interface board for installation, first we'll need to open the unit. There's just four Phillips screws that hold the lid on there. Just simply loosen those, take the screws out, and put them in a place that we don't lose them. After you remove the screws and open the lid, you'll see that there is a ribbon cable that connects the main board to the interface board. What I am recommending that you do is you disconnect this ribbon cable from the interface board. And optionally, you can remove the cable that connects the LCD display. Uh, just keep track of the red and black wires. The black wire is your ground and the red is your VCC. And if you look on the LCD, you'll see that those are also labeled. As far as the interface cable is concerned. On the interface cable, you'll notice that there is a protrusion right here on the side. Just make sure that that protrusion lines up with the interface board. On the interface board, this cable is outlined. That will let you know which direction this needs to be plugged in. Okay, so this unit can actually be left on your installation location, and we'll be able to wire this up. 